Hi Nigel here with the drive wire. I have the 2021 Toyota Corolla hatchback XSE. So top of the line, comes in around $25,000. I think it looks pretty cool. These are some really nice looking wheels it's got on it with Yokohama all season tires. They're pretty good. Now you can get this one in sedan form, but I think this looks so much better with this uh, little sort of clamshell hood right here. And then at the back, it's got this little rear spoiler. It looks kind of funky, kind of cool. Now, let's not get confused. This is not a hot hatch as such. I think we're gonna have to wait for the version of the Corolla that uses a three-cylinder turbo engine with close to 260 horsepower that Toyota offer in Europe, unfortunately only for now, in the Yaris, which is slightly smaller, slightly lighter. This one comes in a little over 3,000 pounds, still quite light. So it doesn't have that kind of zip. I would more refer to this as being a warm hatch, but it is fun and it's fun for one very good reason. It's a stick shift. Yes. Now obviously being a small package, it is fairly small inside, not a lot of room in the back. I'll test that out in a second. I'll also show you what's under the hood in just a second. Let's take a look at luggage space. There's around 18 cubic feet, but you can put the seats down, which is the versatility of a hatchback. So here at the back, manual tailgate, which is to be expected for a car of this price of 25K. And then under the floor, there is nothing, no spare wheel. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's under the hood. All right, let's go take a look under here. And, uh-oh, uh-oh. It's one of the old school, one of the old school ones here. So this is a two liter displacement, four cylinder, naturally aspirated, no turbos, no additional help. 169 horsepower, couldn't quite make it that extra one to 170. 151 foot pounds of torque, doesn't really kick in till a little over 4,000 RPM and then driven through that very nice six speed manual transmission. Again, it's not gonna light your socks on fire, but it is a fun little car and we'll show you that in a second once we get going for a drive. Yeah, it looks pretty good from the front too. It's got a fairly big grill. It's got these uh, couple of low down spotlights, these nice cool looking front light spread sort of wrapping around the front of the car. Uh, the styling is pretty good. It's got this little sort of a slight bit of a splitter slash spoiler on the front. So it has done a pretty good job of making it look aggressive. Now this particular model comes with the uh, black mirrors black roof package which does cost you a few pennies extra uh, i think it i think it's worth it although i would have probably got a lighter color even though i like this gray i would have got a lighter color to go with that black because it's really hard to see it uh, as is right there let's take a look and see what it's like on the inside it is a bit of a squeeze in the back this is where my seat normally sits and I have some leg room. This seat's a little bit further back. It's not bad. Uh, it's got plastic in the back with some leather in the center. A headroom is not too bad. It's pretty good. Middle seat. Uh, you got to sit a lot higher and your head is on the roof. But all in all, not a bad place. No rear AC vent. So you're going to get quite hot in the back. But not bad for a, for a small little Econo car. So front seats are pretty supportive. They uh, they got a little bit. Of, they've got good uh, side support. Pretty decent here. The, the driver's seat has electric. The passenger standard on a lot of Japanese cars, particularly uh, this type of budget vehicle. The no seat height, just back and forth, and move the backrest. This one has uh, adjustable lumbar support. It's actually very good that this is electric because it, it gives you the ideal position for. Uh, a, a manual transmission vehicle oftentimes is when it's yeah, sort of like constantly moving the seat back and forth to get the ideal position. This is pretty easy with this particular car. Really nicely made inside, soft materials here. Uh, it feels well bolted together. It's a Toyota after all. How, how, how could it possibly be bad? Um, some of these stalks feel a little bit cheap, but again, it's kind of what you would expect. Here in the center console, you've got Toyota's infotainment screen. It's not bad. It's not the fastest. Uh, this one doesn't have navigation with it. That's extra. 
HVAC controls below. And then up front, there's a small spot here for a foam, but it's almost impossible to, to get it out once you have it in there. And mine, it just doesn't sort of fit in there. So that's not very helpful. I use it as a, a, a mask storage. Heated seats on this particular model, XSE, has got the heated seats. Up front of the six speed stick is the traction control off button and then the rev match if you don't want to do it yourself. Back here you've got your hill hold and also your parking brake and two reasonable cup holders. And then a little bit of space in here with one USB and one 12 volt with a small amount of storage in the front directly ahead of the driver and it's a nice feeling leather wrapped steering wheel you got all your usual controls here volume change channel change track etc and then you've got fuel economy information and you can scroll through different messages on the screen it's not a bad place to be um for twenty-five thousand dollars, you could get something that's a little bit quicker than this but you're not going to get much that's as reliable as this Toyota and it, it really is nicely put together. I must say, I can't complain. All right, one final thing, let's take it for a drive and see how it goes. A couple things that I do like about the way it drives is the gear change is pretty smooth nice sort of throw action not super short but the gear lever is high enough that uh, it's easy to reach it's high enough so you don't hit your elbow on the top of the cargo space there all in all it's quite smooth so I'm gonna turn the rev matching on it's taken me a little bit to get used to the rev matching because I usually do heel and towing myself and I'm having to forcibly stop myself from doing that. It's not too noisy. The engine does sound a little bit buzzy, but it never sounds strange. So you can whop it right up to, you know, 60, 6,500 RPM and change. And it doesn't sound like it's struggling in any way. And then changing down is kind of fun because you can hear that, that rev matching works. There it goes. And it'll even do it in first gear. Now I've taken it out on some twisty roads and, and it really does handle really well. It doesn't understeer. It's a little, the suspension is a little soft to some body roll, but these Yokohamas grip really well. Um, I'm pretty impressed. And that multi-leak suspension really does let this little thing carve the corners. And you can't really get into trouble because it isn't really that fast, 169 horsepower. It's, it's really not that fast, but it feels quicker than it really is, which is kind of, kind of a bonus. So, you know, it's fun to drive a manual. I would probably spec this as a manual. It is very easy to drive around town. I don't drive manuals that often. I haven't missed too many gear changes. Touch wood. Pretty refined on the freeway. It's great in the twisties. It's perfectly fine around town. And all this bodes well for a possible 260 horsepower three cylinder turbo engine from the Yaris GR that they currently sell in Europe and Japan and the rest of the world, everywhere but here, which sucks. But there's been rumors that Toyota may put it in this car, the Corolla hopefully with an all-wheel drive system. If not, then a limited slip diff, at least at the front of its front wheel drive and stick shift only. And I think you'll have a fun car. And this is a fun car. It really is a fun little car. I was expecting it to be somewhat rental car boring and it isn't. It's great. And the stick is what makes this car. Now the clutch isn't perfect. The biting point is a little too high for me, but I've got used to it. Um, if it could be adjusted, after, if I bought one and it could be adjusted, I would adjust it to bite a little bit further down, but just a small, small thing. And yeah, the infotainment is not the best. It's a little sluggish, but I am certainly, I'm definitely enjoying driving this car. All right, let's get on the freeway here.
You gotta keep this engine on the boil to get the best out of it. It sort of reminds me a little bit of the of the old non-turbocharged Honda Civic SI, which just has a fantastic manual transmission. This isn't as good, but you want to keep changing up and down, up and down, and using the most out of this car. And the same thing with that little Honda, probably one of the best transmissions I, I've ever used. But yeah, I mean, just like, change gear for no reason. It's kind of fun. You know, you can go directly from sixth to fourth. Once you're above 4,000 RPM, this little engine gets more and more on the boil. It's not a hot hatch, but it's definitely fast enough to be enjoyable. And that's the main thing. Very good chassis on this. They've done a really good job with this thing. I haven't been I haven't been able to get it to understeer. I mean, I haven't gone super crazy, but I haven't been able to get it to understeer anywhere. I miss this car when it goes back. Very impressed. All right, we'll come off the freeway here. Great, great little car. Of course, being a Toyota, it'll last forever. There goes that rev matching. There is a strange squeaking noise coming from this left-hand side, which I probably hear it there. Quite sure what that is. If I owned it, I might be somewhat concerned. Take it in and get it fixed. But yeah, uh, something's rubbing against something. This particular car has done about 5,000 miles. I'm sure those miles have been very hard miles. Motoring journalists don't take it easy on any cars. This car's done really well. Um, suitably impressed with it. If I was looking for a car for under 25 with a stick shift, with a decent amount of power, I would call this a warm hatch. It's not a hot hatch, it just isn't quick enough. But it's a hoot. It's an absolute hoot to drive. And it's got enough power. It's not. It, I want. I would like it to have more, obviously, but it has enough for, for what I would I would need on a, on a daily basis. It gets it gets up on freeway on ramps without problem. Joins the traffic doing you know whatever speed 60 70 miles an hour. It it really is quite good. So we're doing a lot of sort of town driving here because I think you would spend a lot of time driving this in town and this manual doesn't get old. I would be perfectly happy sitting in traffic with this little car. Absolute gem, this, this transmission. There goes that rev match. The thing I like about it the most is it's fun at, at low speeds. You don't have to be driving balls out to, to actually enjoy this car. It's zippy pretty much any way you take it. Yeah, I can't fault this car. Looks good. It's got plenty of room inside. It's a bit limited in the back for uh, taller people, but it's got decent cargo space. All right, well, appreciate you guys watching as usual. Uh, it's been a fun little test drive. Like, comment, let me know what you think. And we'll be back with a new video quite soon.